Okay. So I just had a quick play with Safran Risk uh, version 21.1 in the cost module, which is this bit up here. And what I've had a quick play with is the groupings button. So one of the new features that came out with uh, just before Christmas was this ability to change or have more than one cost breakdown structure. So I've gone with a, a CBS, an organization breakdown structure, so an OBS and a WBS type thing. And you can slice and dice and quickly change between those different three things. So if you want to see what total office costs look like on your project, or uh, it might be total site costs, as, as these ones here is donated by the orange, and some off-site costs. So we've got a, a little bit of uh, off-site disposals to be doing here, so it's not so much. but we can actually run the analysis. I've just got some estimating uncertainties on these things here, so this will move around a minute. I'll just hit complete on that for a thousand iterations. And we can look at this uh, CVS, so the office cost, the on site costs, off site cost, or indeed we can uh, look at the schedule, but we're looking at cost right now is the kind of focus of this little experiment. Now if I go back to my cost module here and change the grouping and say, well, I don't want to see it by that, I want to see it by organization. Hit OK. This will re-render. And I've now got a different set of uh, breakdown structures, such as got it broadly split into two here. So we've got internal cost and external cost. So internal parties, different people costs, project management office, strategic partners, internal labor that you might have uh, spread throughout the site uh, throughout the duration of the project like logistics of site security that kind of thing so i can slice and dice very easily between those and maybe looking at some of the external costs so supply chain materials or specialist hire for services clearing of diversions uh, heavy plant and equipment hire or maybe you've got some novated contractors that you actually have to to use because uh, you've been told to so again i've sliced and diced, I've got this, or I can change one more time uh, from OBS to the sort of WBS by discipline. And that will re-render once more, but this time I've got it as uh, management costs, design costs, uh, build cost, and handover cost. And again, you could open that up and look at the little split and the breakdowns of those things. So uh, pretty flexible. And then any time you change that on here on this cost module, what will then happen is when you go back into the distribution graph on the top left there, you can see that I've now got my PMO cost or my enabling function, my design. So anytime you re-render it on the cost module, it does the same here on the Monte Carlo output. Pretty neat, I think. So I guess an obvious benefit is that when you come to use a, an output such as the tornado, the driver's chart, uh, and you've got it focused on your costs, uh, and you can slice and dice between all these different things. So slicing and dicing by like a work breakdown structure or like a phase of the project, like the design phase and what are the top drivers of, of risk on the drop on that uh, phase is going to be a different question or a slightly nuanced different question when you split it between what's internal costs and external cost, because you might have internal um, design re resources and external design house resources for instance. So being able to slice and dice by these different WBS, CBS, OBS is going to be really beneficial there too. So I guess for the avoidance of doubt, what we're really talking about here though is integrated cost and schedule risk analysis. So via that cost module here, we've established uh, the, the mappings with the activities. Uh, uh, and once they've been established, it doesn't matter how you then break it down in terms of visualizing this cost breakdown structure or organization breakdown structure or work breakdown structure. It doesn't matter because they've been attached. So that means that their position in time and when they're being spent is uh, profiled out in the kind of the time uh, chart below there. So that means that when we run the risk analysis and we've got the estimating certainties and discrete risk events, etc., on this uh, Gantt chart here, that means that we can also start to explore not just the distribution graphs of these costs and these breakdown structures, but we could also go into the PCF or probabilistic cash flow. So if you wanted to look at management uh, or any of these uh, items here, you can see how they spread out over time or intended to versus their risk adjusted position. And then, of course, go back to your cost breakdown structure and then go back to grouping, change that 
to something like the organization breakdown structure. It re-renders here, but it also means just like the distribution graph, it's also going to re-render it in here. So now I can choose between internal costs and look at people in general, or I could go into a deeper drill down on those costs and get that spread and profile risk adjusted versus deterministic, or indeed look at external costs, because I'm looking at this through a completely different lens now. So the insights you'd be able to start teasing out here are, uh, well, who knows what they could be, but um, I'm quite excited by the, the, the potential of this uh, for, for, for everybody that's using this system, but also just from a risk management perspective, I and mean, if you think about it, uh, you could come into the grouping. There's nothing stopping you adding a new grouping and just saying, well, this is my what if. And then you start creating a breakdown structure where you start reassigning scope to different parties and do a what if scenario, Monte Carlo, and get the output wherever it's probabilistic cash flow or, or just traditional outputs. Uh, slice and dice in any different way that you like. I think it's pretty cool.